Happiness with Dave Cullen. C U C K. There's now this sexual fetish knocking around the internet because it's the internet in which a man is actively okay with his girlfriend or wife having sex with another man. Now, in reality, that's beta male behavior. At Dave Cullen University, we believe in universal salivation. Because if he had any self-respect, he'd walk away. He's trying to make it look as if he's in control of the situation by saying, oh yeah, I have no problem, you know, I'm cool, I'm, I'm cosmopolitan and sophisticated and progressive because I'm all right with my wife having sex with another man. Well, it's quite apparent that Dave Cullen does not believe in the concept of open relationships. To be fair, Francesca, at the time of making this video, there are 273 likes on this video and 4,000 dislikes. Please understand, corporations, social justice is not profitable or popular. Because controversy sells. You should know this more than anyone. People can click dislike all they want, but they've viewed it. And that's all that really matters. So, yes, this does make them money. Sorry. They want to live in an echo chamber. How can you ever possibly measure your ROI, your return on investment for an advertising campaign, or in this case, a business, if you're not willing okay, to genuinely accept the real feedback? This, this is how you know these people are ideologues. So are you saying that if all you got was negative feedback for your content, you would change your content? If you didn't change your content, well, then are you just an ideologue? Well, to me, you're just an ideologue, but from the other side, but, you know, would you admit this? They believe what they're putting out there is popular and right and good and truthful. But so do you, and you're riding a wave of popularity because having your perspective is very popular right now because it's edgy. In spite of overwhelming evidence and criticism to the contrary. So if someone gets criticized by the majority, that automatically means they're wrong, I guess. So, you know, in the 40s, people who pushed forth for interracial marriage, they must have been in the wrong. Now, I'm not trying to say that Francesca is saying great things here and that MTV News has a reasonable message, because they often don't, but you're making these huge jumps of logic here when it comes to, oh, someone is criticized by a lot of people, that must mean that they're wrong, and if they don't change their view, then they must be an ideologue. Well, I mean, welcome to the club. You have a channel, MTV, with 1.6 million subscribers, almost 1.7 million. I don't know who these people are. It dwarfs my channel by a factor of eight times, and I lay odds that my video, this video here, is going to get probably a similar amount, if not more, views than the 24,500 that you've amassed since the 26th of April when you uploaded this video. Nobody wants to see this stuff, and when they see it, they dislike it. Well, I don't like most of your videos, but I still give you views. And, uh, you know, my favorite videos of yours are the ones that actually match the name of your channel. You make very, very, very good technology videos. Very, very good. Uh, they're, they're some of the best on this platform. To understand the history of cuck, look no further than its two delightfully intertwined components, misogyny and racism. How? How are these the components of the word cuck? Misogyny and racism? Because there's misogyny and racism in everything, everywhere. They run with a narrative. I agree with him on this. They are pushing forth some bullshit. They are spewing misinformation or disinformation. You know, the word cuck is not rooted in misogyny and racism. Over time, the shortened version of the word cuck became more common, and that's likely because of two of America's favorite pastimes, racism and pornography. <sighs> what the hell am I watching? Franny, it's, it's incredible. Those are my sentiments exactly when I saw that. Yes, I agree. Just incredible. It's hardly surprising anymore, the words that are coming out of your mouth. I, can you just imagine how sanctimonious you have to be a person to say something like that about 300 and something million Americans? Now, all seems fine and well with his response to what she was just saying there. I agree with him. It does take a certain kind of person to make that kind of statement about the majority of the country and the intentions of the majority in the country, you know. But 
his video is about to take a turn that, well, he's not paying attention to what she's saying. And he's actually kind of backing up what she's saying. Uh, so, uh, watch. Now, if you really want to know where the modern usage of cuck comes from, remember that pickup artist scene from the early 2000s? That mystery guy? I mean, it's better if you don't, but we gotta talk about it. Okay, now she's moved on to talk about the pickup artist scene. You know the movie Groundhog Day? Yeah. For the majority of the movie, Bill Murray's character was trying to be a pickup artist and was trying to find out all this stuff so he could get with her. But what ended up allowing him to get with her is him making improvements on himself and becoming a better person. That's what got him the woman in the end, not this idea that you need to memorize and, and manipulate and all that shit. So a pickup artist is a bunch of shit and guys who give relationship advice, for example. Obviously, MTV Decoded is going to be against any kind of subculture that encourages men to become more masculine, stand up for themselves, and to become more successful. Um, the pickup artist scene is all about trying to teach guys how to be manipulative and to lie and to be dishonest. Um, that's not relationship advice. It's teaching guys how to be dishonest. Let's get real here. To become more successful in business, to become more successful with women, because obviously they hate masculinity. They hate the manipulative, lying, dishonest, toxic things that are taught by some people who claim that they're promoting masculinity when all they're promoting is bullshit. They will shoehorn whatever they want that fits their narrative into one of their videos. So they're talking about the word cuck, but they're happy enough to segue in the most absurd maneuver possible. I mean, this is just an almost impossible move they've managed to make it. It certainly is a ridiculous segue. They've, they're talking about the word cuck, and now they're going to talk about game theory. So when it comes to men, pickup artists like to divide them into alphas and betas. An alpha is a guy who totally gets all the sexy desires. Okay, so more BS. No, that's not BS, and you're about to prove that she's right. And it's because these people are science deniers. They deny evolutionary theory. So the term alpha male and beta male are applied to the animal kingdom as well. They're not exclusive terms to human beings. The alpha male is usually the biggest and strongest, the leader who gets more females than the beta male. The beta male is the follower. But hey, you know, it's just that th those facts are inconvenient here. When did she deny science? I don't understand. Y you just proved her right. Because his controlling and dominant personality is so attractive to women. Okay, Franny, we both know that what you're suggesting is not true. Yeah, you say that, and then you go on to say... Okay, we know that women are more attracted to confident, successful, assertive men. Yes, and being dominant is part of that whole personality type. That's part of it. What are you disagreeing with? Not beta males who are more effeminate. Women do not wish to date them because they're too like other females. That depends on the personality type of the woman or guy who's into other guys. It, it all depends on the personality type. If it's a dominant woman, they're probably not going to want a dominant guy. That was sarcasm, by the way. I couldn't tell. Meanwhile, a beta is a guy who's too nice to be an alpha and supposedly is always being used by women and never gets laid. It's not entirely inaccurate though, is it? A woman doesn't want a gay male girlfriend as her partner. She wants a man to be a man. If he's not willing to stand up for himself, if he's a pushover or a walkover, if he fails all of her shit tests, as the term goes, if he doesn't know how to romance a woman, he's gonna fail with her. I don't really know how else to take that, other than you think that a guy's ability to manipulate should be of the utmost importance, and that we should assert our power over women. I, I, and people can say, well, 
he doesn't say that exactly, but how am I not supposed to assert that out of this? Because that has been the standard power structure, so to speak, for a long time, especially when you take the way that we've had to survive into consideration and you take religious viewpoints into consideration. Religious viewpoints, uh, uh, I should say, organized Abrahamic religious viewpoints shove forth that that is the power structure that's supposed to be there. Being taught to respect women is referred to as betafying, and a beta is also often referred to as, you guessed it, a cuck. Franny, you say this as if women have no agency of their own at all. So guys should be dominant, and women shouldn't complain about being treated as if they have no agency. By saying that someone who thinks women should be treated like they have agency is actually saying that women don't have agency. I can't really wrap my mind around your mode of thinking here, Dave. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. It's the female of the species who decides which males get to reproduce. They make these choices, and men simply learn what women want. It takes two to tango here. They will always deny the basic reality of male-female gender dynamics. The fact that men will always be expected to make the first move. That's just how it is. Because of the way that we used to have to live in the past, in order to survive, that used to be the case. It doesn't necessarily have to be the case for the future. Now, our natural inclinations would be for that, but some of it, some of this element, is a social construct, whether you want to believe that or not. Yes, there are the uh, instinctual things that we have going on because it's been going on for so long, but that isn't a declaration that that's the way it always has to be. There are some women out there who like playing the role that men have usually played. And there are men out there who like playing the role that women have usually played. Let's not downplay the people who don't want to live according to those same standards that we have for so long. And women are attracted to that level of assertiveness. How is it a surprise to you that the guy who lacks the courage to do that is always going to finish last? That depends on the woman, and it also depends on what your priorities are in a significant other. To respect women is referred to as betafying. Okay, so you're willfully misrepresenting the situation here. The reality is that yes, alpha males do respect women. They can, but they often don't. Respecting women is certainly not any sort of prerequisite to be an alpha. But beta males, is not that they respect them so much, it's that they're afraid of women, and women detect this fear. Okay, they detect beta male desperation. They detect it a mile away, and it's a massive turnoff to women. It's either a combination of creepiness or a lack of conviction and balls that gets them friend-zoned. Essentially, to call someone a cuck is to imply that they aren't a real or strong man, as if there's only one way to be a man. Franny, that was never the implication. Of course there are various ways to be a man. Okay, you can be a masculine man, you can be an effeminate man. If you are the latter, you are going to have less success with women. Okay, the same is true of women. If they are more masculine, it's a bit of a turnoff to guys. Well, I think I've shown enough of that. Uh, his argument is essentially, well, you know, because this is the way that we've been in the past, this is the way that it should be in the future, and anyone trying to suggest otherwise, or that we can be different, is just a, you know, cuck.